Hello, hi guys. Good morning. Welcome back to a new video. In this, we are going to see about block placement queries again. This entirely to make all this stuff, it took a lot, 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 lot of time. So it will be very helpful if you can please like it again after watching the entire video. I told it in the beginning because I forget in the middle or in the end. Cool. Let's start off. The prerequisite for this is you should be knowing what a range data structure is. Although you can. Assume it as a black box and then can also use the exact same code, but at least you should understand what a range data structure is. Cool. And for that, I highly recommend please go and watch this one video. This one video is more than sufficient for your range queries. Again, for this part one, part two would have been there, but part two is saying range updates and point query. Part three is range update, range query. Now, usually, this is more than sufficient for all the problems. As soon as we will see another problem which will require those part 2 and part 3, then we will bring part 2 and part 3 for it. But this part 1 is more than sufficient for everything. Now, coming on back, uh, let's see. It simply says you are given an infinite number line. As you can see, I have an infinite number line. Okay. Origin at 0, origin at 0, and extending towards the positive x axis. So basically, it is a extending towards positive x axis. Cool. Now, I am given 2D array queries. So in the input, I will have queries, which is a 2D array. You can easily see for this. It simply says that it is of two types query of type one. It says that I should build an obstacle or a block at a distance X from origin, which means if the X let's say is two in this case. So at a distance of two from origin, this is a distance of two from origin. I should build a obstacle or a block. I can change it interchangeably. Now, okay, when this is done, and again, you simply see that, okay, when I say a distance of 2 from origin, I am indirectly referring a coordinate of 2, right? And when I say, let's say query would have been 4. So, I am asking you to build a block at the coordinate 4. That's it. Now, it's simply, next thing it says is, next type is of query type 2, right? The type 2 query says, x at a place x and a size what he is saying is check if it is possible to place place a block of the size this anywhere in the range from 0 to x so now for type 2 query again type 2 query i will think of i am placing okay i am placing something at 6 again not physically placing but okay my restriction my foundation is 6 I cannot look forward, which means I cannot look 7 or 8. I can only look from 0 to 6. Then my task is to see if I can place a block as a horizontal block of a size 4. As you can simply see that if I am, okay, my, my foundation is from here to here. The, as I have one of the obstacle here. So one possible portion block size I can have or basically range size I can have is 2. Other possible range size which I can have is this specific range size which is which is 4. Again here I had no obstacle. Here I had at 6 I had no obstacle. Neither I will place one. It is just a virtual boundary saying your only possible limit is from 0 to 6. And then I can see I have possible option of 2 or 4 and then I technically have to place a block size of length 4 and I can see I can easily place it so I can virtually place it which means I can virtually place this specific block of size 4. I have to just tell is it even possible to place it or not which means when I say virtually place it I am not actually placing it which means this will not occupy this place. This I will just uh, he will ask me the query can I place this block of size 4? I will tell yes or no and then I will move forward. That is what they are saying that the queries are separate. Right? Okay. We have to return the boolean array result as I told you for only the type 2 queries that can be placed are specific at that specific x of size can we place something of size in up till the x point or not. That's a true or false. Cool. So this example as you can simply see simply say okay i simply in, again the queries from queries are executed from left to right so i have to firstly go at the location one sorry it is a type it is a type one query which says place an obstacle at what at location two so i'll simply place an obstacle at location two then he simply asked me if again it's a it's a type two query which means 
he wants an answer from me if virtually i place a bar at 3 can i place a block of size 3 no because here i have the look like i have the space of 2 i have the space of 1 i have no consecutive space of 3 so the answer is false as you can see answer is false okay no worries again as soon as this query 2 is done i should remove it it's a virtual query which means it is not a permanent query now i go to next query again this query of type 2 i will again go and ask if i virtually place a block at this can i place a block of size 1 horizontal block of size 1 as i can simply see i have location of size 1 here also and here also so i have two size also one size also so for sure i can place a size 1 that's more than okay so that is a true answer for this next query i again it's a type 2 query virtual query at the point 2 if i restrict it then can i place any block of size 2 yeah i can because it is available okay it is also true it is also true thus you have to find the answer now let us see first thing is can we figure out something from the constraints of the problem for sure we were told that we have an infinite line but is it actually infinite is it actually true let's analyze whenever we want to analyze because see infinite is something very big we have to bound ourselves so that we, have, we can determine the complexity of the problem and the approach which we will take so for that boundation we will first check what is the maximum of what of our question and the answer what is the maximum question value which the question can give and what's the maximum answer which we can get now why is the question answer important question is important so as to know because if you remember if we have the idea of how much long the limit of question is which means when i say question i mean n length of query in this case if i know the n limit or maybe i know the limit of the input size i can maybe figure out what approach i can apply on the question but if i maybe can figure out okay if the answer is small maybe i can apply some approach on the answer and maybe directly get the question if you don't know there's simply a dp technique if you can just write on add coder add coder uh, dp1 like knapsack1 and there's knapsack2 also in add coder dp contest in that you will see from answer you can go to the question and knapsack1 says from question you go to the answer cool so i just figure out okay uh, for query 1 it simply says query 1 of of kind of x so it only require x query 2 is x and a size okay I should speak low it's super late my neighbors okay so it simply now says that okay x x and size now we only have to focus on this portion and this portion speaks out that my x will be an x and size both will be minimum of 5 into 1 e 4 or 3 into queries length queries length you can see is 3 into 1 e 4 so this is again 3 sorry if i just write it it will be 3 into 15 into 1 e 4 which is 45 into 1 e 4 or i can say 5 into 1 e 5 so this is whosoever is minimum so for sure we can see that this is minimum 5 into 1 e 4 again we will take the minimum for both the cases i just took the maximum of this to, to just determine what's the maximum value of x and size so i ultimately was able to figure out the maximum value of x and size which means the maximum value of x the maximum value of x why why i am not concerned about size i am only concerned about x in this case because if you remember i have if i am placing a query of size one okay i am placing a block or an obstacle if i am placing a query of size if i am placing a query of two which means if i am placing at x i will only consider the left part so for me again for left part i will look for the size so for me the foundation is itself is a x so x is the actual limit for me and i figure out that the x i can place the obstacle at the maximum distance of 5 into 1 e 4 or 3 into query dot size this is my maximum obstacle which means n will determine the maximum obstacle which i can place which i can place which means the question can ask me to place now now coming on back let's visualize what all things can or will happen in the queries which they are which they have which they have given to us 
but before that just look at one more thing that x he is technically saying the obstacle he can place from 1 to n which is this limit which i have defined n now if he is saying he can place an obstacle from 1 to n i should also restrict and say that in the program he mentioned that i should start from index 0 so this is my limit technically this is my limit if this is my limit so i should place an obstacle from my end at this location 0 and i know that program as in the question will never place obstacle at 0 because question will place obstacle from 1 to n and just so as to make it complete as i have placed obstacle at location 0 i will also place obstacle at location n plus 1 although this is not okay it was my mood so i placed it the program which i will show you for that reason for as to not handle if condition separately i just placed one more bar just after n why i did not place at n was because was because x can be n also it is equal to x can be n also so the question can himself can place a obstacle at n so okay i will not disturb the question right now it is for a temporary basis or like it is for the basis that it is a boundation 0 and n plus 1 is the boundation of obstacle everything will happen between here and also question is saying that question is saying that i am placing an obstacle only at the location where obstacle is not only like not already present so that's also one point which you should remember now coming on that what every what all things can happen imagine that you had your queries of type 1 again queries of type 1 okay first query came of type 1 you place an obstacle here as you place an obstacle you should make sure okay visually what's happening visually happening thing is okay this is the length for you as you place your obstacle if the query 2 came again again the query 2 next query came again it's a type 1 query still the obstacle or the length block block length will be 3 no worries i'll tell you everything everything and this was the last block so it will by default give a size of 3 size of 6 the thing will start changing then the query of type 1 i will get and i will say okay x is equals to 8 what this means is that at the location 8 at the location 8 i should place an obstacle now if you remembered for me i am concerned okay type 1 query is same placing an obstacle when i say placing an obstacle placing an obstacle will do what placing an obstacle will help me to determine the type 2 query because for type 2 query i need to know what is the available block size for type 2 query i need to know what's available block size for that block size that's the reason i was actually maintaining the block sizes possible and thus as soon as i got another another type 1 query i made sure that i should modify the block sizes existing block sizes were 3 3 and 6 but as soon as i encountered a type 1 query i need to make sure check for the previous obstacle check for the next obstacle then from this next to previous earlier the distance was a 6 right again it is just same way checking what is the index what is the index because they are actually placed at the, at the index only now as soon as i figure out this first operation is removing this obstacle now 6 as a 6 as a block size length is no more there instead of 6 i should make sure the current obstacle which i have placed distance with the previous one which is 2 and the current block which i have placed distance to the next one which is 4 now i have removed the block size of 6 and i should insert the block size of 2 and 4 this is the reason i was maintaining the block sizes for me and this is, and this is maintained for the type 2 query now okay this feels very decent and more than enough that basically i am inserting new block sizes and i am removing existing block sizes now first very basic thing which you would have seen here is that when i was when i inserted a obstacle at a location 8 i looked for the previous previous as in just previous which is 6 and just next which is n plus 1 again this is 12 but again i have showed n plus 1 because it is explicit 
so when i have to ask you what data structure you could have used to store these obstacles such that if i gave you a location 8 you can tell me the just previous which is 6 and the just next which is 12 what will be that data structure so for sure we will have either a set or a map or a sorted vector which means any data structure which is ordered if as you can see vector is not ordered so i can manually order that also by simply sorting it and then i can apply a binary search as you can see for a set we have simply find lower bound upper bound for map also we have same things for binary search and for basically a sorted vector also we have the same things with this we can easily figure out the location and maybe the left and right okay with that we figure out okay maybe we can use something of, of this sort remember this everything is a hint everything is an intuition for you so far now one thing also so you did everything perfectly and you can just simply remove the block of length 6 and you can insert the block 2 and block 4 length but what about the type 2 query let's see that so let's imagine we received a type 2 query saying at x is equals to 8 i want a block size of 4 so virtually i placed a bar and i would have gone and asked my program bro only consider this portion ignore the right portion and give me out of all the block sizes which you have with you give me the maximum block size and that maximum block size should be should be more than or equal to 4 what i mean by that is as i placed my 8 here i placed a virtual virtual obstacle or virtual line here i can easily see my block sizes are 3 3 and here is 2 i'll show you how to find it but here it is 2 maximum block size length is 3 but he is asking me to place of size 4 i cannot place it that's how we thought of from our mind but what we did ultimately we went on and asked our program bro i have maintained all the block sizes your task is to give me the maximum block size whatsoever you have which is out of 3 3 and also maybe this block size which i can maybe find at runtime by checking the previous obstacle and then finding this distance but considering i am asking this as the maximum block size from my program and he will return okay it is three but i am trying to place an obstacle of sorry i am trying to place a block of four which is not okay so he should return a false so technically if you see you are finding okay in this range you are finding what is the maximum block size which you have again whenever maximum comes in you know that you can use a max heap which is a max priority queue or maybe a set or maybe a map but can you use these data structures just pause and ask yourself can you use i will say no why because this max you have to find again this max you have to find for a specific x a specific x you are technically going and finding the lower bound and then you are finding the max in this range you are finding the max in this range while a priority queue priority queue again what if what if you had one more block here and then again you had you had one more block here i'm saying which is saying that a uh, distance of two like here the space is two but then i would have went and asked you bro what i'm doing is i'm placing a block here right even if even if you had got other like even if even if you had to now check for this as your input in your priority queue which means 3 3 but your priority queue will still be storing a 3 3 and 2 for a more better example in this scenario when you are situated right here your priority you will be storing a 3 3 and 6 but when you placed a obstacle a virtual obstacle at location 8 you technically have to ask your priority queue bro please don't consider after location 8 this is not possible in priority queue so priority queue will not be used it can only be used when you have the entire range when i have this entire range but my query 2 can give me any x so now it's specifically focused on that go and find the maximum in a range now whenever this sort of things comes in 
maximum in our range. I know at range query, I can easily solve by segment trees or fan victory. Again, range maximum query, I can easily solve by segment tree or fan victories. If you want to use, you can use a segment tree. But for an interview perspective and for a normal um, fast query, again, even if, if, if you're doing a CP, you can use a segment tree. People who do CP, they never write the code of segment trees by themselves. They actually copy paste the template. If you want, you can do that. That's okay. Penvitry is something which is a six line code that can be written very fast. Also in an interview, it is same way saying I'm writing a DSU in an interview. So for that, please go and watch this video. But you should know what our range based query is and how the code works. I will not explain the code of Fenwick Now, now we know that we can apply everything by using a range based data structure, which will find the maximum in a range. Okay. And I'll use a Fenwick tree for this. Now come back again and start dry running and because we know what is the use case we know what is the data structure used now let's see how we will use our data structure to solve our problem so coming on back we came back to square root one no like what okay uh, that initially we place obstacle at location zero and at location n plus one now i am saying that i will use fenwick tree to maintain maintain what Meant, if you remember, Max Kabini Bulna, your main aim was to find the range maximum query, maximum of what? Maximum of block sizes, which means I should store the block sizes at every index. That's what a range data structure does. So, and from that, I will then go and find the maximum block size. So, what I did, I am maintaining, okay, if virtually I placed at one, the maximum block size is one. I place at two, maximum block size is two. So at every point, okay, at location three, maximum block size is three, possible. Four, four, five, five, 10, 10, 11, 11. This will help us saying, okay, let's say I randomly went on and placed at location seven, a virtual obstacle. So I will ask my range query, bro, can you please give me range maximum of this range from zero to seven? He will say, bro, I can simply see that my, my uh, Fenwick tree is storing 7. So it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and 7. So range maximum is 7. So you can place anything which is less than or equal to 7. You can place it in this range. And I will compare it with, compare it with my query 2. So it seems like that query 2 will work super fine. Okay. But starting off with the query 1 also. Query 1 will say, bro, I am at query one x equal to eight, which technically is referring that place an obstacle, place a hardcore obstacle at location eight. If he's placing obstacle at location eight, he will simply say, bro, I was simply seeing one thing that again, I'm showing you the earlier picture. Earlier picture was saying that if obstacle was at three, so he was seeing a distance of three. If he's obstacle here, so he can easily see that distance for him, the distance for six is right now three, okay. When he was here, again, imagine that he was not here. The, so the distance for n plus 1 was a 4, sorry, 6. Right? Okay. Now, when this came in picture, when the obstacle at 8 came in picture, firstly, he will tell that I will go and query my previous data structure, my previous obstacle by simply using a set or a map or a binary search. I can check that previous index or previous obstacle. I know its location is 6. My location is eight. So I can simply update my, I can simply update me with the new distance two. But not only, okay, he was affected. None of the, like none of the people in the left portion will be affected for sure. Why? Because you obviously know that he's coming on the right. He came on the right. So right one will never affect the left one. But on the right of him, there was this obstacle whose distance would have been affected as you can see earlier the distance was six but now after he is placed the distance only remain as four so you have to go and ask the data structure which will find the nearest or basically i should say next right obstacle go and ask him and tell him bro you should modify your obstacle and from six you should make it to new value which is four okay Seems okay, seems good. 
do you see any issues so far considering you know right now that you can easily apply a query to you saw that you can also apply a query one you saw you will use a fenwick tree again if you are working with me in victory in worst case i might end up bringing a text segment tree with lazy, lazy propagation i will not bring a normal segment tree video that's very common and that's not much useful also but yeah did you see anything anything which is not okay in this problem there is the issue is that you are using a max in victory which means it will do a max query how this will hamper me firstly is saying that i was querying doing a query one at x equal to eight which means i was using a point query i modified this okay worst case let's imagine i modified this also to four but what about the remaining in between ones in between my d of seven is still a seven this is still saying this is still saying that bro this is still saying that bro i am still a seven i can still incorporate a block size of seven can he no he cannot because he can only do a one at max block length and again if i ask you specifically for a virtual length of at x equal to seven he can do at max a three but he's still thinking that maybe i can do it in a i can do it in a seven i can actually place a block of size seven which he's for sure wrong and same way these ones are also wrong why they're wrong because they were never even told that bro you should be updated with the minimum value which you can actually afford or accommodate for that one very basic thing which could have come to your mind is rn i can apply a range based update which is same way saying i will use a segment tree with lazy propagation to apply a range based update but again that code is also very long and very complex you can go about it we can also give you template if you don't know just go to my github write uh in victory you will get the entire template of in victory with range based range based queries but still it is not feasible to write even in an interview or neither in a contest if you don't know what a lazy propagation is what should we do now for that if we go and take a step back we were taking a maximum we, we, we were taking a maximum so one very again when like when i say maximum i was taking if i place a virtual query at this again virtual obstacle at this for a query to i place at nine I was taking the maximum of this range and I was saying, okay, this one I will handle separately. So this one, this portion I will handle separately and this portion I will take the maximum obstacles. And here we figure out that this is, this is the number seven, which will end up giving me a higher value, which is not even the actual value. So I should be doing a range based update, which I cannot do because I, I'm not using a lazy propagation. Although in Fenwick tree also, you have the range based update, which is the type, which is the part three of the Fenwick tree playlist. But still, can we do it with a simple point query? Let's see. For that, we figure out, okay, Arin, you were doing a maximum in your Fenwick tree. And the issue was that because of this defaulting to a higher value as seven, you were in court, like you were getting this value. So I will say, put the value as zero, default value. So I will simply put a default value. I will put a value of zero, 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 zero. Now things look perfect, right? Um, I will say no. Why? Although right now, if you go about and ask your query and maybe virtually, if you think of, okay, I'll do a query too. And then maybe let's say my, again, if I ask you a query to at virtual placing at nine, I will go and do a range based update, like range based query here. Uh, this is three, this is three, this is zero. This is again a two. So maximum, he will give me a three. And then this distance I will get as one maximum of three and one is still a three. So for sure, seems fine that with the updating, with the putting as default value is zero, maybe I am able to solve it. But issue will start coming when you will query for a query of two. How? Let's see again. This is the entirely, entirely same stuff which I showed you above also. When you will do a query of two, you will simply go and say, bro, um, I'm doing a query of two. So although for you, I will get the answer. Okay. 
sorry, for, for, for query of 2, you got the answer itself. But we forget one thing. What about the query of 1? Because we changed, we changed our whole structure. Now we were doing it a 0. So we change the structure. Let's see how the query of 1 will go about this. So for this, we'll come back to query of 1. Query of 1 says, bro, I'll put an obstacle. If I'm placing an obstacle, which means that, okay, it was again, the problem specifically says that you will place an obstacle at a location only once. So this was initially a 0. I placed an obstacle. I checked for the previous location. It was a 6. 8 minus 6 was a 2. So I updated my fin victory and said, bro, at location 8, place a value of 2. Okay. So he's updated perfectly fine. But he should also update his right, just next right one, which was n plus 1. Who was earlier a 6? Now he will ask him to update it to a 4. Did you see a very basic, very big thing, big, big blunder? You are saying to your fin victory, bro, I will ask you for a max query, but I am asking you to be reducing. You are technically, again, this is, this you will only understand if you have the knowledge of fin victory, which means if you have watched that video, one video. So the fin victory code simply looks like I do a add operation, which means the add operation will look like this. Add operation, which means you are adding a value or basically you are saying that query is maximizing. So you can only maximize a value. So this value can only be maximized, which means if it is six, it can only be increased. It can become a seven, eight it can never be reduced. So when I made my default values are zero, my type 2 query, sorry, my type 1 query stopped working. So, we, we saw both the cases. When I was actually trying to solve my problem, my type 1 query was working when I put the default value as the actual initial values, but then the type 2 query stopped working. When I put the values as 0, my type 2 query started working, but my type 1 query, but my, but my, but my type 1 query stopped working. What is the solution? Solution is, Go backwards. I don't know what do you mean by go backwards. Go backwards means go back in the query. Your query was saying, okay, Aryan, I will give you obstacles. You place it and then I will give you query 2 to query something. Query 1, which is query of type 1, says placing an obstacle. So at the end of the entire queries array, I would have placed all the obstacles. Now I am saying go backwards which means remove obstacles. Imagine that you have placed all the obstacles. Now you're going backwards, which means you are removing the obstacles. Why this is useful is because as you will remove an obstacle, you will actually increase the length. Either the length will remain same, which means the block size will remain same, which constant or it will increase. That is the beauty of going backwards. For example, here I placed I placed a query, I did a query one. Imagine that it is the end state. It is the end state it is looking like. Imagine I'm going backwards, which means the last query which I performed was, a, let's say a query one. Again, the last query one which, which I performed was this query. So now if I'm going backwards, I will simply remove it. So firstly, I will remove it. If I removed it, so this is gone. When, when, when it came in, remember when it came in, it only impacted himself and his just next one. When he is going away, for sure, he will only impact himself and his next one, same way. So, when I say he will only impact himself, so ideally, this, which was d of 8 as 2, it should ideally become a d of 8 as 0. This should become. But my point is, this will never matter. You change it or doesn't change it, that will not, that, that will not, that will not matter. And the issue is, you can never even change it. I told you, it's a max query. You cannot reduce a value. And my point is reducing it or basically changing it anyway. Basically reducing it, I was saying, it will not matter. Why? I will tell you right now. Why? It, it is because as you will see, at, as it was going away, as it was here, sorry, as it was here, so it was blocking his right one distance. He was blocking his right one distance. The distance was, he was making his distance as 4. But as he was going away, he 
he will be increased by this much amount so he will increase by six so basically addition of plus two is indirectly happening at my just right obstacle so if i ask for this range it was earlier four but now it has increased to six so if let's say if i would have placed a virtual obstacle which means query two at here or here or here or here still at any place if i'm placing if i'm placing at here i will still go and ask my range based query for this range and i will manually find my answer for this range which means from my x to my just leftmost i will get this value i will ask my range based query for this range and i will get you the maximum possible block size so in any case this was never affecting my answer because this i was calculating by the range based query this i was calculating by my own self manually x minus the previous let's say it is previous x minus previous but aryan what about uh, if it exceeds if it exceeds no worries this i know it is what's your value plus this value so no matter what it will be for sure this will be for sure greater than this value even if it, it would have been zero still a plus two plus two would have made it a plus two but for sure if obstacle is there then there will be value of uh, n plus one or maybe anything but there will be a value of let's say one at least one because there's obstacle itself so if i do a plus two even then it will become a three so this addition will make sure that this block size is incorporated thus we got to know that ha huh, it's always possible to go backwards and then use our fenwick tree point update now everything is done cheers you have got everything now is clubbing everything and showing you in five steps how you will get the answer step one simply make uh, again use the exact we use the exact same fenwick tree template use that template and just again modify that again if you go and look at the code you will see that this is the code which we have used in the fenwick tree when we are doing a ranged update or basically sorry when we are doing a range summation range query or range summation thus we were adding stuff here we want maximum so take the maximum here we want maximum take the maximum that's the only change from the ranged based query update that's the only change and this is a line of code again i can write the same code in just six lines so it's a six line code which i tell now again if you don't understand this go and watch the video next operation was as we are iterating from the back we know that all the obstacles are already present so all the again i will take a set of obstacles you remember why i take this because i want the just previous obstacle and the just next obstacle to like to basically find those next and previous obstacles so i use this you can also use a vector if you want but you will see that set is more useful you will see how later on then you realize that i also in the very beginning told that in the obstacles i will place a obstacle of zero and i'll also place obstacle of n plus one but you will see okay for me the n which i defined above was this specific portion n but i added a plus one here itself so no worries so here i wrote a simple n okay then i have put the obstacles zero and n plus one okay i'm good now make sure okay this is the how i initialize my pen victory that's simple basic class how you initialize then you have to make sure go on to all the queries you know again when you are actually trying the queries you will go from the very end but going from the end means that all the obstacles are already present so you will firstly iterate on all the queries you will check the type one query which shows i am placing an obstacle then you will get that specific x and mark that okay this is one such obstacle i should place it in my pin victory then i will simply iterate on all the obstacles which i had all the obstacles which i had then again uh, in the very beginning obstacle i will just simply remove it what i mean by this statement is if you remember i have a number line like this in the very beginning i place obstacle at zero then my program is asking me to place obstacle at let's say x1 x2 x3 x4 and x5 and ultimately in the end you remember i place obstacle at n plus one here i place obstacle 
Cool. So now I want to push again for this. What you what will you update update in the fan victory? You will simply say that fan victory, which is let's say FT for me. I will simply again in the bit terms I will say bit at that location x1. I should update the block size. Block size is this. Okay, let's say this is bx1, right? For this one, for x2, again this is bs1, bx1. For this x2, I will say that bit value of x2 should become a block size of x2. Block size, which is this bx2. So technically, I am going on to every again. This is obstacle x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6 are obstacles. So I'm going on to the obstacle. I'm checking the previous obstacle and then finding the distance between them and that I'm assigning to my Fenwick tree value. Cool. So I will again, as it is the first obstacle, which means the zero, I'll ignore it. From the actual obstacle, first one, I will, it IT will point from here. IT will point the first obstacle, which is this one, not the zero one. Then he will ask the previous obstacle, which is prev of IT, make sure you don't like you should not do a minus minus it what will happen with this is you will go to infinite loop iterator is something which is by reference so if you're doing a minus minus it and then assigning it to prev it what's actually happening is that it by itself is reducing and then being assigned to prev it if you are using this kind of, like this kind of strategy make sure to increase the it back increase the it back right because you have reduced your it here now if if you don't want to like write this cumbersome code just do a prev do a previous of your it it will by default point to the previous iterator okay your prev is pointing here your it is pointing here you have to find the distance which is the gap size so i will find okay what's the value okay it is x1 what's the value of the previous okay it is zero the gap size is x1 minus 0. This is the gap size. I have to place at location of x. So again, just referencing my iterator and then getting the value x. So I'm saying at the x, please update or please add. Again, add is saying update. Please update or add this gap size at this x. This is my simple putting on all the obstacles in my Fenwick tree. Now, what I will do, I have to simply go and do my queries, but I will do from the end. I know why. And if I'm doing from the end, make sure one thing that you were, you are simply pushing your true, false, true, false in the answer, but you're pushing in from, as you're querying from the end. So make sure to reverse it and to actually uh, give the answer by reversing. So, okay. The query, query can be type one query. On type one query, you do what? To remove the obstacle so if i have placed obstacle here firstly type 1 query will simply go and ask me bro i am a type 1 query i am a type 1 query i am a value of 8 except 8 so you should go and remove it so i will firstly go and find obstacles but again that's how that's where your set will come in picture your set if you remember okay where is it gone your set will come in picture obstacles you will find your obstacle at location 8 at location 8 you will find it so iterator again this is this is simply saying obstacle points dot find value 8 it will point it will give you auto of it again it's a iterator iterator it will point to your 8 this is helpful for me to figure out what is the previous what is the next and the prime reason for me to place a n plus one is no matter what i will always again if i have any obstacle i will always be able to figure out the previous and the next because i have my myself by myself have placed one one obstacles in the starting and the ending so no matter what i will always be able to figure out previous and end so i do not have to explicitly write some if conditions to handle this edge case cool that is the next use case why i actually placed this one here this one was required i can agree but this one i placed just because of next i don't, I don't have to have to handle separately in the code cool now i got the previous 
again same way doing a prev of it you will you, you will get the previous same way next which is next of it you'll get the next next iterator when you have got this make sure it's a type 1 query which means type 1 query says bro simply ignore me i told you why this ignorance will work and then left one it will not impact but the right one he will be updated to the higher value so earlier it was a 4 now it will be updated to a higher value which is and how to get the higher value higher value is the after removing this higher value is the new distance which means from next to previous the distance the gap size this is my new distance so i will get the new distance as from next to previous this is my new distance again next to the pointer and this is actually referencing or basically addressing like referencing that pointer so giving that actual value which is n plus 1 or basically you can say 12 this again is pointing to this location 6 and now i am referencing what at what location he's, he's, he's pointing he's pointing to actual location like number 6 so now the distance is 6 the gap size is increased so i can simply increase it now the code will look like firstly you know it's a type 1 query now get the x go and find the iterator pointing to the actual x find the previous find the next that will be useful to get the gap size so i'll get the gap size at that location which is the next location update that basically add that okay what about the what about the type 2 query simple same as what we saw above also on the type 2 query which means a virtual obstacle is played let's say at location 9 at location 9 i place a virtual obstacle of let's say i'm trying to place of a size 4 so i will say bro check for the previous obstacle go and run your fenwick tree query in this range right i will simply go and ask range will say 3 3 and 2 okay range maximum is 3 but this portion is still remaining so from x which is this point to the first previous point which is value at your pre previous iterator this will give you a distance of 1 then take the maximum of this 3 and this one to get the entire maximum of 0 to x and if this maximum is more than equal to your size then you can place this block of size 4 else you cannot so exact same code again this you can solve by fen victory by saying that fen victory from 0 or you can say from 1 to this point which is 8 again if you are if you are worried or curious about this what it is what it is or everything go and watch the fen victory video simple a simple crash course for you and then go and find this which is x minus value at previous pointer so i will firstly get the x and size i will get the next by simply checking the upper bound of my x make sure it is not a lower bound why not a lower bound because i know i have to go to the previous of this which means that what if what if the obstacle would, would already have been there if i would have put a lower bound of x so low, lower bound would have pointed to here lower bound would have pointed to here then i would have went back i would have went back and i would have iterated here right here in this case there is let's say no so upper lower bound would, would, would point here then i would have went back and point here, would point here the issue is in the first case when i had a block here i should have technically asked my fen victory to query for 0 to x directly but because of i choose lower bound and then did a previous it will still again go and do a 0 to pref and then i have to separately do a pref to x which again depending upon you how you feel like you can do it but how we can do it simply doing upper bound getting a previous then from 0 to sorry from 1 to previous i will go and ask my inventory for range maximum from previous to x i will find myself what's your maximum i get the maximum gap if this maximum gap is more than my size i'm good if not sorry bro that's not possible now ultimately you have got your answer pushed back but the answer is pushed back as we went on from right to left which means as we went on the queries from end but please reverse it 
because you have to return the answer from start. So by this simple, you will simply get the answer. Now, this is the entire code. Again, you can just pause the video. This is the entire code in one go. Firstly, I have the simple Fenwick tree class. Then I have the main solution class in which exact same code as I showed you, exact same code, exact same code, exact same query one code, query two code, ultimately the answer. Complexity and log n, simply a Fenwick tree complexity, base of Fenwick tree n. And that is the most optimal, most easiest solution and expression for this problem. If you liked it, please do like the video. That is always very helpful. Uh, and yeah, like that will be super, super, super helpful. If you can see, it is actually a bit late. It took a lot, a lot of time to make the video because of how long these nodes needs to be. How to explain every case, possible cases, possible why range based query, why lazy propagation, fan victory, all that stuff, how they can be used. So, yeah, if you have not joined Discord and if you are still doing programming alone, I'm missing a lot of stuff. It's cool. Bye bye. See you. Take care. And please go and watch crash courses on code with Aryan Bhai. Cool. Bye bye. Take care.